All right. Hey, so uh, I remember years ago, I, I, when I first started in the business, so again, guess what we're going to talk about, Jake? Just, just guess. Uh, Gosh, you know, look how you are. You're new to this business, but you are a bright man. Yeah, yes, we excellent. We did. Uh, we talked about it one on one. That's what we always talk about. I always say all roads lead Jennifer back to prospecting and talking to people. That's what it's all about. All right. So I remember years ago when I started in this business, and I remember prospecting. I've talked about I think last week where I would, you know, or yesterday, maybe it was yesterday we talked about. I'd go into this little cubicle or this little office and make my calls it's where it's where john aubrey used to take his naps do you remember that uh, yeah john aubrey said i i want to snore in here i'd open the door and there's john snoring away but i go in that little cubicle that little call room and it was the size literally of a phone booth and i used to do that and this is why again when i was over at global banker way back you know it was 28 years ago this month last month and uh as i was as i was as i was reflecting on that I remember I got really fixated on only speaking to a certain number of people. And one of the biggest mistakes, in fact, I, I, I mean, I, I sound like I'm 14 years old. I listened to it not too long ago. And Jennifer, of course, started laughing at me. She goes, you sound like you're just a kid in that CD. And the CD is 15 lessons I wish I would have learned, basically, when I started in real estate. And, and, and one of the number one things, anybody listen to that, by the way? Do you listen to that? I you haven't? Do you? Classic. Yes. I put that in and I'm like, oh my gosh, my voice has changed. Yeah, it was, it was actually, I was entertained by it. But the principle is still the same despite my voice. So here's the principle. The principle is I made a huge mistake in my business. And that was, is that for the first nearly five years of it, because I thought I was new and I thought that I couldn't do that which is I didn't work with a lot of the people that I knew. But I just wanted to expand on a couple of things. And I want to I want to talk about what I would consider to be immediate business. And I want to talk about what would be con considered future business. And sometimes jokingly, I'll put up there, you know, stupid business or really dumb things that you shouldn't be doing. But sometimes we continue to do that. And although, you know, I'll tell you, years ago, I used to write up open houses up there. I wouldn't write up that today. Um, I only say that just because I love the fact what an open house does is it usurps the authorities of all of the the uh, aggregators and the pay per clicks and you get in the way of all of it and so that you're not having to buy your business. But I thought let me let me write that up there. I know I talk a lot about this, but there's you can simply wait for your business to happen. Right, three ways to get it. Number two, you can go out and you can buy your business, which. I, I'm not even saying those two ways are absolutely horrific. It's just that they're really expensive and one isn't predictable. So a lot of expense, a lot of unpredictability. But the third is, is like, you know, like you just talked about, Jay, which is, you know, go out and get it. Uh, oops. Gosh, I can't write a bit. All right. So go out and get it. I mean, like you, you go out and you prospect. And so what I realized over the years is there's these things, there's sources of business that would be considered really immediate. And there's business that we get that's really future. And the challenge is, is that oftentimes we don't have enough sources. And then sometimes we're foolish enough that we'll have too many sources to where we don't have enough contact. So just, I want to just focus on this for a moment. And let me give you just a perspective. I'm going to put the first one in here to get your, your, your thinking right. But a for sale by owner would be considered immediate business. And, you know, first in, in my career, for some reason, that was the one that I went after the most, you know, especially in the very, very beginning. And there got to a point to where uh, I was selling somewhere in the neighborhood of, four, well, when I was working with Rob and I worked together, there's more than that, but let's just say 40 or 50 for sale by owners a, a year. And yeah, let me give you an example of what we, I would consider future business. Now, can any of them, well, let me put this one up here. Your SOI, let's just, I'll, I'll just pass clients right? The people that you know. Well, I didn't work with this at all. And part of it was is because I'm so overly anxious and impatient is that I couldn't even see the future with these people. And so the problem is that I didn't really work that business really well. And once in a while, of course, that SOI becomes immediate. You know, once in a while, they'll call you or you call them and boom, immediately it happens. But this is the, these, these future moves that you make in your business or the questions like when I say, hey, is your business getting easier? Is your price points going up? Are you, you know, are, is, is, uh, are, are people asking you what you still are doing and they don't know you're in real estate? You know, you're probably messing this up. 
But one of the first things I did in the first five years, one of the great mistakes I made is I didn't take that part really serious. And what made it really, it made it a lot more difficult. But on a year about five or six in this business, I remember right where I was standing. I was standing, in, I, I, I was standing in the hallway of my house. And I remember I said to myself, as long as I wake up every day and I'm alive, I will sell at least two homes a month. And that was in my 20s where I knew that no matter what, because I had done certain things in this arena, we're not going to get into that. I talked about that calling them, emailing the maintenance of them. Uh, but, but because I did that, I got to a point that I knew that no matter what happened and still today, I mean, I still do, of course, a handful of transactions, two or three a month, just because of this, because the maintenance that I gave. And now I don't focus on this like I challenge you guys to do so because it's not my everyday event. But my point is, is that this is something that you really still need to focus on. But the, the, at the end of this, what I'm going to want have happen is that you have three sources of business. We're going to list a bunch more and you guys can help me look, make the list. But I want three sources. And, and I can just give you a hint on one of the three. This has to be one of the three. Beyond that, I don't care what other two you pick. But if you go more than three, the problem is, is that you get too diluted with your time, energies, and focus. And the other thing is that you then all of a sudden, if you have too little, like I only have this one, then all of a sudden I was missing on this one and some other ones. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to give you number two here real quick because it's just part of the story, but, but just expired, expired listings. Well, what was interesting to me is I, I worked around any when I first started this business. My like one of my prime examples was Leslie Thorup, April Oaks's mother, and 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 Leslie Thorup was a machine on expires, and yet I became a machine on for sale by owners. And if I sat down with Leslie, even in the late ports of her career when she was here at Everest, and she still is actually you'll see her here once in a while, um, but. She doesn't have her, she's not an active agent. Uh, 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 April's doing a bunch of that business and, and they're having a great time and she travels like crazy, so it's fun. But if I talked to her, she would tell me how much she loved expired and how much she despised working with fair sale by owners. And what was interesting is how much I loved for sale by owners, but could not even imagine working with an expired who was already disgruntled with agents, already disgruntled with the fact that their home didn't sell, mad at the agents who didn't show it. And I couldn't get my brain even wrapped around the fact that why would anyone call them expired? But she couldn't wrap her brain around the fact of why would you go and, and talk to for sale by owners? So what I also find interesting in this business is that we will make decisions of what we do or don't like, and they're not very well founded. And as time went on in my career, I started to recognize, like, what is the story that I'm telling myself about any of these sources of business? And, and some of you in here are, are really experienced, been in this business a long time. Just ask yourself, what's the story that you're telling yourself? Well, the next time around when Rob and a few of us were had a little team and we were working real hard to, to sell real estate in 08 and 09, or 07, 08, and just part, uh, a little tiny bit of 09. When, when, when that was happening, all of a sudden, man, my, my world changed here. And I realized that, wait a second, there's no difference. And so here's what's funny. I say the exact same script, Amy, if I'm calling either. Hey, this is George, George Morris, Central Point One, local real estate agent area. Hey, I'm just calling about the home for sale. And I, 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 I say the same thing on open. I don't want to have to think about it, Jake. So I just say, hey, George Morris, Central 21. Hey, I'm just calling about your home for sale. And no matter what, it just opened up because when I'm prospecting, I usually was jumping on a trampoline, literally. Uh, I was listening to music. I was harassing Rob or any other else who's on my team, not paying attention to anything because I was just going to have fun. And I and, and so the moment that the phone, someone went, hello, I was like, oh, hey, I'm calling about your home for sale. And then, of course, the expired would be like, we, 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 we took it off. Yeah, that's the very reason I'm calling. So anyway, notice that your home came off the market as expired listing, and I would just get right into the script. So I, I had kind of my, my knee-jerk reaction when I was calling for sale by owners that I just couldn't, I could mess around completely. And then the moment they answered, I just said the exact same thing. And it made me realize that there really is almost no difference between these two. Now, you don't have to pick these two. A lot of times people say, oh, if you go to Everest, you have to call for sale by owners expires, which is just ridiculous. And what you have to do is you have to do this. 
In fact, it was interesting, even though Jamie Sachs came up after, and of course she was dealing with you know the tragedy of Gavin and, and what happened there with uh, the guy at the Salt Lake board. But she, it was actually, it was great for Laura and for Jamie to see like, wait a second here, I work at Sotheby's, I work at Coldwell, but I thought all that you guys did was call for Southerners expired. And if you remember my whole message, most of it was all about what you're doing with your sphere of influence. And, and I think it was like, whoa, hold on a second. I thought, wait, and so people craft these stupid messages of what they think that we're really about, and yet they have no real idea what we're really about until they come to experience. So I'm glad that you're here experience. <laughs> Just for the right. All right, with that, what would be considered immediate business? What I mean by that, and this applies, I'll just give you the hint, doesn't matter whether it's the buying side of it or the selling side of it, what would you consider to be immediate business? And before I, you answer, we think about that, but these two things, there's like a flag, I used to say, there's a flag waving in the air saying, I'm trying to sell my home. Yeah. Or the other one expired is, guess what? I, the flag was waving. I was trying to save my, sell my home and it didn't, it, it didn't sell. So there's a big flag up in the air knowing that, wait a second here, these guys really want to do something as a general rule. Is there some people that, you know, there's some way screwball thing that's going on where they really did take it off the market and they're for sure not selling? Sure. But as a general statement, there's a big flag in the air going, I'm selling. I was selling. For me, that's what I mean by immediate business. So give me another example of immediate business. Writing an offer. No. No, we're talking about sources of business. Not <laughs> yes. That's your job. That's one of the five things. But no, sorry. I'm so, I'm so quick to say no. All right. But, yes. Okay. So, so a good example. Now, could could you put web leads a little bit? Of, I, I mean, what in, in Spiro? Where oh, Jim? I saw was over there, but in Spiro just downloaded ten thousand leads from a from a from a, a a team, and they're all calling them. All these loan officers down in Spiro. So there's a ton of older leads. I know. I was just talking to Alan and Fernando last night. They have thousands of old leads. You know, you're on that team, right? Thousands of older leads. So there's no question. There's probably some future business in there. But as a general statement, I would agree, by the way, that web leads to me would be over here on immediate business. Well, I mean, is that probably a fair statement? Yeah. Okay. And I'm okay. I don't, I, I do, and some of them will be future. And you could probably put them, but let's just put here web leads. Okay. What else would be? Just sold. Just listed. Just sold. Okay. So as a general rule on just listed, just sold, as a general rule, I would put them under future business. I have found that the majority of my just listed, just sold, the majority is usually future business. Does that make sense? Meaning you call them like, yeah, well, we're thinking about it. And you stay in contact, you do your lead follow-up, and eventually they sell or buy. Make sense? So for me, I would be putting this over here. Now look, do I think that you're ever going to call a sphere or a just listed? They go, oh my God, I can't believe you're calling. I, I, we were just talking about selling. Well, it is your lucky day. Here I am. Yeah, do I think that happened? Of course. But as a general rule, you're just listed and you're just sold are going to be on the future side of it. Okay, next one. Referral. Okay, great. I, I, I will put this one. Sure. But I, 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 would, I would say, well, if you're talking referrals, if you're talking like from other agents out there, I mean, right. But I, I, the other thing about future is there's no, it's, it's unpredictable. And what I mean that by that is that it's not that you're not going to sell, get a lead, a deal from it. It's just you don't know when the referral is going to come in, right? So you can get referrals from other agents. You can get referrals from like, I know people, there's a number of agents in the company that do like Dave Ramsey referrals. There's referrals from clientele, but it's not it's not predictable. That's the biggest what thing. What I mean is that's what I'm calling and say, hey, my friend's mother is moving to Salt Lake yep. and I'm referring her back to media because I just called him yesterday. I can live that. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. But it's also, again, it's something that you're waiting to have happen, right? So there's there's no predictability to it. But I mean, okay. again, I, I, I here's the th here's what I would tell you, though, Brindley. You're not being able to say, I pick referrals as my, my source of business. Now I'm going to wait. I mean, right. I mean, yes, you might call that sphere. Like you're so good at doing which I know you are, but it's just, it's again, not predictable. That's that's if that, if, does that make sense? Yep. What I'm saying? So it's not that you're not going to get business from it. I just think I would, for me, just as me, and you might have to write it on a different line. I don't care, but I think it's more on a future side because you can't predict it for sure. John, give me another one. 
predictable. Right. Well, it's predictable to a to a to a degree. Uh, like you don't know when the referral is going to come. Well, well, you uh, plug on people in your uh, so why you do it correctly? You, you should get a return on that investment. Absolutely. That's what you should get if you're doing the right things. What you're saying is you can't come in the morning and say, I need a deal today. And yeah. You're going to get a reach out. Right, which I love, Jay. One of the things I, I stole from Jay, I, I anytime he's in the room, I always give his credit. If he's not, I take it as my own. But Jay, I remember one of the things that years ago he said, "I, what am I going to do today to write a contract?" One of the best mindsets that you could possibly have in a given day. What am I going to do today to write a contract? A contract doesn't matter, buyer, seller, or new listing doesn't whatever. What am I going to do today to write a new contract? Okay, let's keep going just because we're going to run out of time. Builder so, business. what pardon? Builder business. Okay, I can go with that. I, for me, that would be this on that on the until you transition it to right until you actually get it and secure the actual contract or the, or the listing, right? Okay, what else? Give me other ones. Where's put door knocking? Uh, well, for me, that would be over here on, on just listed, just sold. So door knocking by phone or in person, I'm fine with that. Take take any of these by phone or in person for sale by owner by phone or in person. So good point though to bring up. Okay, what else? Pardon? Open houses. Open houses. Okay, I would for sure say over here because again we're talking about predictability as to like are they waving the flag that something's going to happen right now okay what else you guys haven't even had to deal with this much but you will at some point how about nod's right notices of default right okay i would put that part of my sphere but i totally agree divorce well let's just put here attorneys Trust. Right, so estate, yep. people dying, divorce, and then of course CPAs, those people who like they go, hey, go buy a property. Okay, what else? Renters. Okay, I've always put renters over here. Okay, what about sign calls? Immediate. Okay, what else? Just a few more. What else? Pardon. Divorce, yeah, well, I've got, well, the, the, uh, the, they get divorced, but I've got attorneys that they get divorced, right. but divorce would be just one of those things like, hey, it's going to, uh, for me, divorce is, hey, that gives me assurance that homes are still going to sell because 50% of the people out there still get divorced. So <laughs> sorry for the divorce, grateful for the real estate, <laughs> right? I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, right, but I, I, I think that's up here in your sphere, in your past clients, okay? What else? Anybody else? Anything else? Not over okay, I can go with that, right? So we're going to talk about, so uh, we're going to, uh, well, so for, for me, that would be in the just listed, but it's a good point. So non-owner, occupied. So to Jason's point, he's got non-owner occupied, which means landlords, right? People own property they don't live in. And by the way, that's how uh, Brian Burnett, Burnett, when he talks about his database, what he's talking about, Jay, primarily is this. And what he did is he got every single person in St. George, Washington County, and he started calling them, and then he started making them his sphere. And over a three to four year period of time, we sat down and I talked to him about this. I said, dude, every single person in Washington County, you need to call who doesn't live in that actual home. And then he made that, when he said, when he said it, he didn't go into detail, but that is his database. His database was nothing more than just listed, just sold, non-owner occupied property. And he then converted them into being his sphere. Okay, Rob, and then Trevor. This is one that didn't exist um, back when you're when you're doing this. But on the immediate side, for you, those of you that don't know, there's a system on the MLS called Remind. You go in and map out the area you want to prospect, and it tells you how long people live in their house, and it's predicted that if anyone five six seven years or older and it color codes it the likelihood of them selling oh uh, cool so you're I able forgot to about that. that list which would have been fantastic during that era sure but now you've got people that are predicted to sell quickly if you use that system on your media and you're going to make your calls it's better than a normal just yeah system. so it'd be better than here yeah. so just the technology isn't it r-i-r-e-m-i-n-e R E M I N D I think. Or something like that. Look it up. I remember when it came out, everyone was excited. I I I I I predict. Okay, one more. 
just on the right because of the non owner owner on the like on opposite side furbos for rent by owners you can get like investors wait say, say it again frbo furbos okay yeah for rent by owners you can get like investors that will purchase properties from that list yeah that sure you bet yeah so i i guess we'll go back to again non-owner occupied property but you're talking about the buying side yeah because you can call okay. like for rent by owners there's actually a list of vortex yeah so yeah call for rent by owners and find a lot of out-of-state people that are either looking to liquidate their yeah. properties here there you go purchase more so. yeah i still would say they're in the non-owners they're in the just let's just sold they're in i mean that's the source that you go for but really what they are is right they're non-owner occupied or they're they're people who are either liquidating or buying right okay so anything else and i'm not saying that i'm not saying there's like an eternal long you know ever like uh, forever list I, I just, what I noted is, remember, is that you need to have three sources. And my observation is you have to have also at least one immediate source of business. You have to have at least one future. And then I don't care which. The majority of my career, I only had this and this. The third one I added, I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm just telling you, this is what I did. I did that one. Just listed, just sold. Those were my three. That was my deal. And renters. Yeah, I did for a short period. I did renters, but it was only really one year where I realized that is not the path I'm taking in my life. Yeah, but I, but I, 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 yes, yes, I did. When I was prospecting with John Hunter, I went through a year, year and a half of only calling renters. And then I realized that for every 10 listings that I had in the market, it equaled one qualified buyer per week. And I said, Hmm, that seems easier than running around with all the buyers. And I'm just, so I changed my whole formula in the middle of our, of our prospecting with what Rob's talking about. But I realized that the number of listings I had equaled one qualified buyer per week. And meaning that I was able to sell as many buyers by just having listings than just calling on the renters and said, so, guys, just remember, I'm going to point out, do everything you can, right? Call all your leads. This is not a, a question of whether you should work your buyers. It's a question of let buy, if it's, write, write, write this for you. Some of you, most of you are taking notes. Write this down. Buyers are there to help me finance the time I need. Buyers are there to help me finance the time I need to mastering to mastering my ability to take listings. There should be a moment in your career where you will, okay, I use buyers to help finance. I mean, finance, I mean, I made money working buyers while I was mastering this idea of, can I take listings and have complete control of my life? And there, there should be a movement in your career. I, I can take people like an Aaron Christensen who works on, on Austin Kales' team and such a good dude. I remember he, he'll talk to you about his first year, he sold 20 or 30 buyers. The next year, it was like 25% listings and 70% buyer or sellers, or, I'm sorry, buyers, 25% listings. And today it's a solid 50-50. I believe the ultimate is that if you can get to a ratio of 75-25, meaning listings versus buyers, man, that is a pretty extraordinary light. Not only economically, but it also allows you to have the time when you're starting to try to escalate your business up. So there's nothing wrong. You do everything you can with these web leads. You do everything you can to get those things dialed in. But don't forget that in the meantime, over these next one, two, and three years, you do everything you can to master the listing game. So there's a day when you step back in your career and go, okay, I got a nice balance of both. It's like the loan officer. You know how many law officers right now are hemorrhaging in the business? And why do you think they're hemorrhaging economically in the business? Because, because Exactly, Jennifer, because everything they did in this business for the next, last three to four or five years was refi. And because they didn't focus on the relationships and the buying side, all of a sudden their lives became very, very difficult. It is no different. You'll have moments where the market is more buying sides or more, more buying centric. And it'll be more listing centric on another year or another month. But if you don't have a good balance between these two and you become just kind of a, a one show, one guy or gal, you know, rodeo, you only one thing, that is a major problem long term.
Remember this, you, in order to last in this business, I've said this for years, I've said it for a while though, list to last. You want to last this business? Figure out how to list a home. And of course, then get it sold. That does help. Okay. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, you're just going to get more buyer leads if you never sell it. Okay. Which is what I, the, the homies say, hey, we'll sell your home for free, which is my favorite script. Like, help me understand why you're listing your home with someone who actually doesn't want your home to sell. Well, what do you mean? Well, when your home sells, the list of the buyer leads stop. And the only way that homey exists is with buyer leads. It's not the listing. So help me understand, why are you listing with someone who doesn't want your home to sell? Blah, blah. I didn't think about it that way. Well, how can it be any other way? How could you build a business on three grand a deal? You can't. Oh, so you mean the only way I get this offer is if in the, the moment that it sells, they start losing more money off the deal. And in a market like this, these are very painful times for, for companies like that. Okay. All right. Any thoughts, comments, on just deal here, at least one immediate, at least one future, and then you choose whatever other one you want. You have three sources and just stay focused on them. And, and I, I would say this for 90 days, do not look left or right. Pick the sources. Don't call for one week. Go, oh, I don't really, it's not enough time. You need 90 days on that source. 90 days to say, man, I'm going to see, uh, I can, and after 90 days, you can come over here and go, okay, hold on a second here. I'm going to choose something else. And that's okay. But don't waver for 90 days. Okay. Good. Any thoughts, comments, questions? Pick your sources, go after them, be relentless on them. Remember, I built my entire career selling nearly 100 plus homes a year just with that one and that one. You don't need more than two or three, but master them. Get them down so that you make a fortune from that source. Okay, here we go.